Greetings everyone, my name is Enterville, and welcome to my Let's Play of Adventure Dungeon 2, Faron's Fate. This is the sequel to Adventure Dungeon 1, which did not have a formal release outside of its free alpha. And in many ways, Adventure Dungeon 2, even though I'm playing the alpha version 3.1.1, is a major improvement in several regards. So, time to go over everything. Keep in mind though, as this is still an alpha, much is still off to change. And this is not even beta, so many other things are relatively changed, so a few things are a little bit buggy and whatnot. So, if you have any comments or suggestions, please just send them to the developer, Winter Drake, so he can improve the game. Settings are already good. My SFX music, full screen, rebindable keys, all good. Let's go over the tutorial. Now, in this case, we actually have formal Xbox prompts or controls, as well as the keyboard controls. Now, in this game, we actually have more keys than we had before. Instead of just attacking and magic, we now have the ability to bomb, buy, use. We still have our strafe, but now we have the ability to pivot. Here's strafing. Here's our new feature of pivot, where you can just stand our ground in one location, and by holding control or the left trigger down, we can pivot in one location and attack in any of the four directions. Now the magic button, several spells will actually now lock onto targets, so that's pretty nice. And here's how, now we actually have a map, so it'll show undiscovered rooms, visited rooms, shops, and boss rooms, as well as rooms with uh, potions. And here's our upgraded stats screen. Though I do wish there was some... well, I'll get to that. Anyways, let's start the game. Alright, we start almost the same way as Adventure Dungeon 1, with our slingshot and wooden sword. And here's the uh, stats menu, got to add more. Though the slingshot's more useful now as it can be fired, it, it can lock onto enemies. And here are our friends, the bats. Though drawn much better this time. Now, like, like before, killing enemies will drop items like this chicken bone, or meat, uh, mana potions, or sometimes hostile or non-hostile bombs. So keep that in mind. Ah, oh, nice. Now we got a common coal, one of the new items. Ah, oh, that's lucky. So now, I've, now there's actually an equipment screen to the right, so you can see what items are where. And of course, there are also set bonuses, which which removes some of the weaknesses of each set, or negative sides, like the knight armor set, the ma maid set, etc., etc. Now, I only have a, a extensive experience of Alpha 2, as Alpha 3 has just come out a day ago for me. So, some things are kind of unknown to me. The Great Stone is returning. Here's a shop. I don't have enough money for anything. Ah, here are some new enemies we haven't seen before. I like to call these the Bat Demons. The grey ones shown here, once you defeat them, they'll explode into smaller sets of bats. So keep that in mind and try keeping your distance while you're trying to hit, shoot them. The White Bats here, if you d or White Bat Demons, if you kill them, stay. Then they'll flash in a while, then they'll explode, and fire a spread of pel four pellets from diagonal sections. So be careful to be away from them when they explode so you don't take damage. As they take about the... or deal the same amount of damage as bombs do. And the bombs you lay can damage yourself as well, similar to how it works in Zelda. Though, Though this opens up with several new possibilities, as you can creatively make them explode near the enemies, and it'll damage them as well. As enemies are not friendly fireproof in this game, which is nice. Oh, here's the next enemy in our in this game, or new one. These are, I don't know what to call them, fat rats. The gray fat rats will, wow. Uh, after a while, the far off is spread or a volley of all those red pellets at you. Uh, tr from their burping, apparently. And uh, the white ones will release a spread of small number of bats. The number which increases by floor, I think. And here are the regular bats, or rats from before. So yeah, the, those rats can be quite dangerous in high amounts. Not bad buff, that's always nice. Ah, good, here's our first boss. 
it's just like the giant bat from the original game. Though there are certain bonuses you can get if you, if, if you do a perfect run of this. Ow, and now I failed completely on making the bonus run, or perfect run. Ow. Well that was, that didn't really work out as well. I got a magic heart, so HP plus MP up. The drops for defeating the boss at the end are much better than the first game, though I would say in general this game is much tougher than the first. Many due to the changed hitbox, and the fact that mashing your sorcering seemed to be a little bit slower. In other words, you can't just button mash your way and, how should I say it, and to go do the Spartan way of just bum rushing them, as before. As if you try doing it here, you'll quickly get killed. And it seems like the knockback of your default sword is kind of lower than before, so you must be cautious while trying to deal with these enemies. So, basically it's a strafe backwards and forwards. I can either have the compass or chainmail. After I take the defense up. Once I finish this floor, I'll show off the stats menu. That's it, that is if I survive in this room. Ah, there are the red bat demons. The red bat demons are kind of like a... Um, hush. They're kind of like the white bat demons there. But instead of just exploding when they die, they instead explode... They just put off eight shots instead. Unlike the white ones like here, which explode into bombs, or die like bombs. But both can be dangerous at high amounts. I think I'll take a book of regeneration more. Thankfully though, those uh, giant gray rats uh, volleys, they're blocked by covers, or all these blocks. Ow. The Scarecrow will basically lure enemies to fire towards it. It's like a, a disposable uh, statue. But I'd rather just take the Book of Regeneration, as it's more u universally useful. Ow, I keep... Trying to carefully correct this. To get this uh, treasure chest, I must blow this up, but I want to position it in such a way that I can actually hit that enemy. By this, I was able to get the Dragon's Eye, which will increase my crit rate. And unlike the first game, if you stand on the edge of the room, you can't exit it. In the first game, if you stood at the edge of the room and didn't edge your way forward at first, you could actually exit the room without fighting its, com its combatants. But here, it's not really possible. It, it immediately closes the door in behind you. I'd rather take the great sword than the master sword, as I don't have enough health. I won't stay in enough, high enough health pools to actually use it effectively. And I rather always have more constant damage. Ooh, Sun Orb. Sun Orb will basically, or... Will always increase the, your stats up by some amount. Like here, it increased... It increased my damage by one and everything else by one. Except probably my health and such. Well, it did actually by five. So that's nice. That's also one of the new item drops in this game. Ow. Uh, you can actually collect those uh, planetary orbs uh, from room to room randomly generated, and they'll buff one, of, one or more of your stats. Ow. Like the sun will boost your all of your stats, Venus will increase your speed, defense if I recall correctly, etc. etc. I think the boss is nearby. Yep. Ow. The real danger of this boss is the explosive shots it does in filling up the room with all of these enemies, as well as all their volleys. Whenever it flashes, beat, start strafing around the room so you can avoid all these attacks. 
and clear up the room as quickly as possible from all these. I decided to use a bomb to make it easier. Good, a magic card. Time to continue. Before I go on, let's go over the stats screen. The sword it shows my base attack power, the, the star shows my mana power, shield, my defense, and that's also my crit chance. Apparently I currently have a crit chance of negative 20%, so no luck there. But if I actually get a crit, I'll have 1.5 times damage. Up there is, I don't know what the top right represents, the, the boots is my speed, the clover is my luck, and the heart plus is my lifesteal chance, star plus is mana steel, I think. Can't really recall directly. But yeah, it's a lot harder to get some of these item drops now, like the health. Or that's what I think from some from random generation. It may be just me. Well, I'm, at least I'm back to full health now. Ooh, I'll definitely want to come back here. More the health, the better. Especially as I take, well, at least from my previous runs, it seems like enemies scale. Oh, that was close. As in, as you get to higher or deeper floors, they'll take more damage and they'll give, they'll deal out more damage. I'm not sure if the defense stats go up, but it seems to get harder and harder to kill them, so it becomes more of a dodgy game. I'm not sure if it's true of Alpha version 3 though, so don't take my word on it. I need to figure this playtest it more, or play through this more. Like before, I was able to actually kill off these rats with just two hits. Now it takes three hits with a boosted sword. Well, I better go back to that shop now. I want as much health as possible. It seems health is even more important in this game, considering how much how much more difficult it is. The Master Sword would be useful for pro players though who can dodge everything. So it may be useful for speedrunners. And that was a risky shot. Always try taking out those big gray rats, uh, all the big rats, as quickly as possible. Especially the uh, what should I say, the wider ones, because they can release all those bat, smaller bat swarms, which at lower depths can be quite dangerous due to their raiding abilities, or should I say, swarming abilities. So they can easily drain your health and take you to death. Ah, and also, strangely enough, a lot of keys in this run, but not that many. Well. I got it now we can use the master sword. Ah, that's strange. It's the first time using it. Apparently, if you rapid fire, it actually just destroys the projectile before it reaches the point. It has some uses, but I don't remember that being the case in the original Zelda. And again, we didn't have this fast sword swings. So I'm not sure if I should call this a bug or something else. I think I'll take it for just for now until I reach the boss, or if I take any damage. Let's see how it works. As it does the exact same amount of damage as the normal hits. Like, for example, makes taking on those gray rats much easier. E no, I'd rather take this. For example, here. Still, when it gets close, it comes a little bit risky. 
and finally a treasure chest. You know I already have regeneration. I have to fight the boss. That didn't really work out as, as I intended. And if you perfect run the boss, you gain you gain an extra item. In the case of Bat, you get the Bat Toot, which fires off the same projectiles as the Bat does. But of course, I don't really have a use for it because I rather have more regen. So overall, pretty good shape right now. No, I don't want the boomerang. More bats. And I think they now are scaling as it takes five hits to kill them. One of my main complaints with the second alpha is that how difficult it is, or maybe it's just RNG, to find better items would do more damage. Unless it's intended to make it even harder to kill these enemies, harder and longer specifically, um, I, I don't know if it's just the RNG being unkind to me, or whether it's just low right item, item drops. <sighs> ah, nice. Damage will be up when my life is above half. That should be very useful now. Although I don't see it. This could be. These sword beams are very useful for long range as well. Especially with a certain other boss which we'll be facing. Or I'll be. It also seems like the dungeons are much longer, floor wise. As usually I'd be in the 4th or 5th or 6th floor by this point, or completing the game actually, if it was Adventure Dungeon 1. So I'd like the increased depth here. It may be the fact that each floor is bigger, so... Ow. Well there goes my sword beams. Or would be better use that. Uh, I keep mixing up my bomb and magic key. Ooh, charm. I better have this though. Nice! Okay, okay, I don't think I'll ever have to worry about these keys anymore. I have so many keys now, there's really. N I rather have health now. It's crazy now. Nice, help the speed up. Need more speed. That's nice. Knock back. Nah, I better have the beams. I really wish I had the, the charm hammer. As it was very helpful in my previous runs. Oh, wait a minute. Ah, okay. Apparently we have 8 directional movement. Either it was in Alpha 2 or it wasn't, or it wasn't paying attention as I'm playing with a keyboard. That makes things a lot simpler, especially with some of the boss strafing. Oh, yes, we do. <laughs> Silly me, I've been playing this game so much like Adventure Dungeon 1, I thought there was no a directional movement, only four. Well, that makes things even better. Kudos to Mr. Drake for implementing it. Ah, uh, nah, I'd rather have the regen as always. Oh, it pays to be safe, so I want to maximize how far I go and actually complete this on, on camera. I say that because the LPR's curse usually takes by at this point and makes us fail. I 
I really wish I had more bombs. Really, the small bats are the main issue. And the explosions. Oh boy, I really need to clean these up. Ah, there goes my perfect run. I hate these bats for this reason. At least, uh, at least the stun spell continues on from place to place. There we go. Uh, at least take all these out. Good. Ooh, life steal chance up. So now I have a 25% chance of life steal per hit. On to the fifth floor. Ah, oh, I need really to get that to pack. Rapid fire as usual. Nice, metal shield defense up. Defense and held are one of my favorite items in this game. I'm saving up on the using my regen just for later, just in case I actually get more meat. Nice, just like that. <laughs> Sandwich. I think that's a reference to Team Fortress 2. Nice. Well, I wonder if that increases that my effect at doing it. As, but I already got that from before. I really wish I got a charm, uh, charm or cooties as they're called here, as the charm spell is really powerful in this game, especially when a lot of enemies get hit by it at once, as it can really quickly put up the damage. Now I know the developer also asked on Reddit or somewhere about a discussion of how, well, the game. Let me here's some background for it. This game will be will have a paid beta, I believe, and so it will be released as a full product, as the alpha is only free. So he was wondering what our thoughts on what the price should be based off the current gameplay. Or at least an estimation. Currently from what I see in the graphics, music, which was added in this update, thankfully, and all the enemy types, well, right now I think it would be f uh, 5 to 10 dollars. Around 10 if uh, to my brutally honest opinion. I like this game, but right now it's Looking at the past history of the first one, it's rather simple. Compared to games like Binding of Isaac and similar, those are much more complex with more secrets, so... This game, compared to them, I would say this warrants a 5 or $10 at currently. Of course, if there are more features and complexity added, I would definitely rate this higher. But right now, quite a few things need to be added, like more enemy types, as we have much less than the previous game. Over here we have these bat demons, bats, rats, and those giant rats and a few other types. But we don't have things like the slimes, the the wiz robes, the wizards, the demons, the goblins. Yeah, and so the enemy variety here is, is a little bit slim. Even if those get added, it's still going to be a little bit less. So, so right now I'd say the thing that this game reads right now the most would be more enemy types. Or at least re-implementing the ones from the first game. I do like the increase in controls with the pivot added as well as the strafing. That makes it, it, taking on these enemies much better, as well as the 8 directional movement. But right now, without the, all the enemies it kind of gets repetitive. And of course there's only one environment now, I think. The dungeon environment, so it's a little bit more repetitive as well. Ow. Oh, that's nice. Let's see if I can regen my all my health first before I go in. Uh. 
Oh, this boss. I'd like to shoot. The giant rat. Um. The way the giant rat works is basically charges at you. Funny thing is though, if you leave a bomb, it'll try swallowing it. So it acts quite a bit like a Dodongo from the Zelda series. See? Leave it here, it'll swallow it. Boom. So it does quite a bit of damage if you do that. So that's a nice funny way of luring it. If you know if you have enough bombs left over, try the strategy. It really makes trivialize this as boss. And it's kind of hilarious. So it's a nice way of the developer to give more ways of killing the bosses. Unique ways that is. Just, so it's kind of easy, it'll try ramming towards the wall if this releases a spread of five shots. Um, yeah, you can lower it pretty easily this way. And by defeating it, we got we got the health, the heart container, and the charger's tail. So friendly flies will, will fly out when hit. So, that's pretty nice. So it's kind of like the projectiles from the first game, though it's not as powerful as from there. Over there it was almost instantaneously chasing the bosses or enemies. Over here it's not as useful. Though that also may be because the rooms are bigger and everything zoomed out. Come to think of it, the adventure dungeon rooms uh, from one were a lot more claustrophobic compared to this one. Here it's a lot more freeform, though that could get a hectic with a lot more enemies on screen. It really gets annoying when it takes four or five hits to, t to destroy these small bats. Yeah, I'll take this in for now, I need more health. The hilarious thing is that I'll never be able to worry, or never need to worry for any chest anymore. I never got the skeleton key before, so yeah, 100 keys. Unless I go to 100 floors, I don't think I'll ever need one again. Keys, that is. But as that rat's tail I got earlier, or charger's tail specifically, if you perfectly defeat a boss without taking any damage, you always get an extra item, whether it be like that bonus drop or something like that bat's call. Which means that if you do well, you'll get even more bonuses and whatnot. So that's a nice way to for perfectionists, or perfect runners. Yeah, these bats right now take 6 hits, so they have around 25 to 36 held out. Uh, sometimes the hitboxes can be kind of annoying to determine where they are. With this, uh, with this, uh, perspective. Ah, apparently my, even though my crit chance is 5%, it now does double damage, apparently from all those enchants. Well, this is kind of funny. You can only do it with rats, as long as you rapid fire, like I'm doing right now, you can easily just lure them and kill them. It's nice though that the, the slow spell transfers out to under maze when untouched, like the 
infection spell from the previous game. I'm trying to conserve as many bombs for the bosses. Oh no, this is bad. Let me just take it on this way. These small gats get really dangerous, like over there, when they swarm you. And of course, the bomb, if you even if deployed, you can damage yourself pretty badly with it. Oh, another one of those rats. Yeah, so another charger's tail. So yeah. Before that, let me go and explore the other floors. I really need more health. Or a shop, for that matter. Oh yeah, and you can knock back the bombs, or set off bombs by using your sword. That would be helpful to know. Yeah, I'd rather have regen. Ah, good. Mm, I'd rather have this. A little more health's always nice. Yeah, I'm going to the next floor now. Let's see how far I can go. Seventh dungeon. This is actually as far as I got last time. Ow. Well, at least I get two of these. Uh, I kind of hide it when I can breaking out of this. Sometimes it sticks too far. When I say sticks, I'm talking about the... How should I say it? The, the strafing. Oh, whoops. Okay, I guess that was it. Well, I guess it's time to actually make uh, some opinions on this. Oh, wait a minute. Um, I wonder if this is a bug, but... Um, what floor am I on again? Apparently I'm still on Dungeon 7. Um, I think I died so fast and re reset that... I'm oh. Um, yeah. I think I discovered a new bug in this game. Whoops. Apparently as I reset too fast when I died, apparently now I'm stuck on Dungeon 7, with only base level stats. See? As I take now over the... I take 18 damage per hit, which is only true for the Dungeon level 7 scaling. So, whoops. So apparently I discovered a bug while testing. So, yeah. You may want to look at the video again, developer, and put it down slowly. or play the video in a slower rate to see what ha specifically happened when I died the first time as I pressed the enter button too fast. Or should I say I pressed the attack button to just try deflecting the bats, but I did it too fast so apparently crashed it. Oh well, I wonder if you can make a nice challenge run. So yeah. Let's see if I can actually do this correctly. Oh good, it, it fixes itself when you reset the hard way. Oh well. And here is the flaming projectile I was talking about earlier. And lock on magic. So you can now lock onto the nearest target, and it'll fire at it. Boom. And the other advantage is that if you fire it right between enemies, he's passed through it. That's pretty nice. I'm looking for another demonstration. 
Like for the fire arrow, if you can position it just right, boom, you attack two enemies at once, killing two rats with one arrow. But anyways, before I go and give my final thoughts, here's other, one other funny glitch. Okay, it's all good here and here. If I do start game and and press it once, but I press it multiple times and enter, it results in a pretty funny glitch. Here it is. Yeah, um, I guess when pressing the start button multiple times, it, after the first one finishes, apparently there's no boolean or check or trigger to prevent it from happening again, so <laughs> you can rapid fire the rocks crumbling sound. Oh well, those are the two major or two main bugs I see. Well, one bug. One bug was discovered completely by accident on this run, so there's that. But overall, my current thoughts on Adventure Dungeon 2 Thrones Fade of the alpha version 3.1.1 is really positive. I already see some obvious improvements from the first game in terms of graphics and control with the 8 directional movement as well as the spells, with, with now how you can lock onto the locations and with some more varied effects. Uh, I didn't show it here, but the cooties as well as the charm hammer can really charm enemies, which is pretty nice. There was something similar in the first game, I think, but it's much more useful here with more enemies, and the fact you can spread from enemy to enemy, similar to the infection in the first game and the cold touch here. And generally, with the lock-on, it makes it even easier to target enemies, so that's pretty good. Music is pretty, I would say, pretty standard. The enemies, well... There is only one or two new enemy types added here, and the, and there's quite a few left over from the first game that really need to be added, like the wizards, goblins, etc., etc., slimes as well. I do like the giant bosses though, and the reward, and the incentive for actually perfect running them instead of bum rushing them and taking as much damage as possible with the extra items and whatnot. I showed off the giant rat, the the, the two types of giant rat, the fat giant rat normal giant rat, um, the giant bat, but I wasn't able to show the giant twin bat bosses, which have a unique uh, mechanic in a way. Not really a unique mechanic, but the way if you destroy one of them, it changes the, the way the fight goes. So my overall thought, uh, to sum it up in a in few words, I like the way the game's going, and I would say it's in pretty good shape, but I think more enemy variety has to be added as well as more level variety. That, of course, is going to be taken care of as the first game had about four or five environments. Well, four environments in the main game and at least one secret rooms. So I assume the same will be here. But more needs to be added in order to justify a price point, as I would say, over between five to ten dollars, considering the competition of, let's say, The Binding of Isaac and similar games. But I do like this. It's quite charming and has its own unique feel. Well, viewers, I hope the developer Winter Drake is able to fix these bugs and improve this game in several regards. I really have good hopes for this in the future. But anyways, thanks for watching this, viewers. In the next part, I'll probably be going over the next up part of the alpha, the beta version of this game, or a run where I actually am able to complete the game, if possible, if it's actually possible, as I haven't really seen words. As in the first game, you could go up to just the 8th floor, but here, I'm not sure if it ends at the 8th one as well. Thanks for watching viewers, and have a nice day. Toodles!